Moving on okay. to douches. Uh, yeah. So, for example, allegedly, Casanova <laughs> would have his partners insert this, like, half of a lemon rind to be a cervical cap. Ow! Yeah, well, because of the high acidity, lemon juice was believed to be a type of spermicide. I believe that would work, but... It might, I but... don't believe that would be fun for the woman. No, I feel like... Yeah, that would mess everything all up. I feel like talk about like, fucking up the pH. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, dude, shove an orange rind up yours. <laughs> like, back the fuck up. Oh, so uh, Egyptian women <laughs> also used vaginal suppositories made of crocodile dung, as did Mesopotamian women. Which maybe you smelled so bad they didn't want to get near you. Hold on, cause here's what I have to say about this. First of all. Women in India and surrounding areas used elephant dung in the same way. Ugh. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like this would be a huge turnoff because that's like a sticky, no, icky, it, 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 nasty it, it, mm. mess. Like, I cannot imagine a scenario in which that's not completely disgusting. Yeah. Uh, mm. um, I have no idea how effective it is, but at the very least, I guess it couldn't have made things better. Uh, uh. It's not like they were more likely to get pregnant with dung up their hoo I just hoo-ha. also have questions of, like, how does that not result in so many infections? You think that's it would. Waste, that's waste products leaving one animal and being shoved in a place that... Very sensitive no, spot no, of no. another animal. Yes. It's not... I, I don't know. I have questions. So many, and I... I don't know if I want answers. I did not, so I moved on. Okay, fair. Yeah. Oh, so in Greece. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> um, olive oil and cedar oils would be used prior to intercourse. Olive oil, I could see, but cedar oil sounds like it would burn. It might have been a mixture. I don't remember. But it was used prior to intercourse basically to inhibit sperm motility. Okay, so. And therefore it would to give the woman more time to douche afterwards. Okay. Was the thought. Lemon juice, vinegar. And seawater were popular douches. Again with the painful. Seawater sounds awful. I thought that sounded the least awful. <laughs> I mean, vinegar sounds awful. Yeah, they all but, sound... I, I mean, mean, they they tell you to use apple cider vinegar to balance your pH, so maybe that wouldn't be the worst thing. But seawater, I'm like, what happens if a crab sneaks in there? Ow! <laughs> Just you get a bucket, you're splashing up there, you're not paying attention, suddenly there's a sea creature in your hoo-ha. I feel like you would notice a crab Okay, but if you're not in looking in hoo-ha. the bucket, and you just splash, now you've got more problems than when you started. Oh, how is this my life? Okay. It is your life because you became my friend 30 years ago. <laughs> oh, yes. These are facts. Okay. Um, so... We're moving to a little more current now. Okay. Just a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. So, apparently, until the early 1900s, and I don't have an exact date, but women in the United States would use chemicals such as Lysol to douche. Oh, no. They did. Oh, they did. Is that um, why they were so uptight all the time? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Per Smithsonian.com, the chemical formula for Lysol at the time contained Cresol. Or Cresol? Sol? Uh-huh. I don't know. Probably Cresol, because Lysol. Lysol. That's probably yeah. where it got its name. Anyway, um, which caused inflammation, burning, or death. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lysol was heavily advertised as an effective feminine hygiene product. Um, but apparently that was a euphemism, because birth control was illegal at the time. Oh, God. So the Comstock act was passed in 1873 which made it illegal to disseminate birth control through the mail or across state lines per pbs.com okay um many states soon followed with their own restrictions Uh, and i forget what they call all these laws but it was uh, something uppity white men i don't know purity laws i don't think that was actually it but white men making rules about women's bodies yeah so birth control was not legalized until 1965 if you were married. That's disgusting. And 1972 if you weren't. Oh, that's disgusting. And I have some uh, pictures of these ads. So this one says she was a jewel of a wife with just one flaw. 
she was guilty of the one neglect. Oh, no, 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 no. Did that... you put lice all in her hoo-ha? Yes, the one neglect that mars many ma marriages. Lysol helps avoid this. So, yeah, because she was not clean down there. Oh, my God, that would hurt so bad. No wonder yeah. their women didn't want to have sex or enjoy it. Yeah. Because they probably were on fire. Yeah. This one says, beware of the one intimate neglect that can engulf you in marital grief having chemical burns on the inside of your body that's apparently the preferable option according to because you Lysol. want your wife to be screaming in pain and sobbing anytime you attempt to be intimate with her yeah and then this one basically it's really too long to read but the point is that lysol douching will break through your husband's indifference to you because you'll smell like a chemical plant apparently and what? it's look at this look at this lovely little web oh god she's trapped behind oh god. before she can sit on his lap now that she's shoved toxic chemicals up her lady bits and then what if she left too much on and then now he's got chemicals on his man bits he's not going to be happy look i don't have the answers i was not here at the time i was not either ow but yeah okay so that's the majority of history um i did not want to go into anything too modern um that's fair hopefully we all took sex ed hopefully it didn't suck although let's be real it probably did it was a lot of um, pictures of diseased genitalia to try to shock you and scare you and it's yeah that basically was... made it so that you were not educated towards sex 100 oh, percent <laughs> yeah, but the last thing I wanted to mention, and I'm only touching on this very briefly, was the Dalkin Shield. Yes. Yeah, that was an IUD that was on the market in the 1970s and the 1980s. Uh -huh. um, it caused a lot of issues for women. Yes, it did. Um, it was basically because the string was not properly sealed. sealed. It was not sanitary. Yes. Um, and it became like an actual bacterial breeding ground, yes, leading it did. to massive infections like mm -hmm. sepsis and death, um, or infertility on slightly less severe cases. Yes. Um, and in part that was because the FDA did not regulate IUDs at the time mm -hmm. because they were not food or drugs, drugs. Um, but instead a medical device. Mm -hmm. um, so that didn't change until 1976. Um, but if you want to hear more about that, I'm pretty sure it was the Swindled podcast that I heard that on initially. Yeah. Um, and they did a real big deep dive on that. So I'm not going to. But yes. I wanted to mention it because it seemed significant in the history of birth control. It was very significant. Yes. So that is it. That is all I have. All right. For this week. <laughs> so. Oh, right. Okay. Here I go again. If you enjoyed the podcast, give us a like, share, subscribe on any platform. We are on social media. You can find us on Facebook at Our Trivial Obsessions. You can find us on Instagram at Our Trivial Obsessions. We have a YouTube channel, Our Trivial Obsessions. You can find us on Twitter at Our Trivial Pod. We have a website, www.OurTrivialObsessions.com. There you can find our episode extras and bonus materials um oh that reminds me you should also check out the link to our merch which better be up and available <laughs> right now because we should have did that last week we should have done did that um that'll be open until the end of april yes april 30th um so check that out and you can email us at randomqueensobsess at gmail.com random because we are queens because we are obsessed because, because we, we do. do email us there for any topic requests for a future episode or anything you'd like to add to one you've just listened to did i miss anything i don't think so okay all right so we'll see you next week bye bye